Okay, so today I'm going to show you all how to get started with the uh, Arduino uh, chipset here. So this is uh, actually has a, a couple processors on here. It's the baseline um, brain that you would need for uh, programming uh, if you're going to do any, any form of a robotics, uh, megatronics types design. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go with the basics here. So how do you find the software? So I'll move the camera up here. So go on Google. As you can already see, I already typed it out, but Arduino Uno software. So you click that. And then what you do is you look for the, uh, usually it's the first one there when it talks about the uh, software. So you click that one. And I'll just let you see at the very top where it says Ar Arduino.cc and of course English and software. And then what you'll do is uh, you go to software. Let me move that up so you can see it right there, software. Matter of fact, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see. There you go. And then um, you scroll down a little bit here. I'm using a Mac, so what I'm going to do is find the Mac OS system, which is right down on the bottom, but there are the different um, software sets. You do have the opportunity to donate if you want to. I'm just going to just download because I've downloaded this before. And you allow know, downloads, I'll say yes, and then wait for it to download. Let me go up to the for those Apple folks here, you see it in the little download bar. And even if you click it, you'll see where the status is and, and how many seconds remain. Pretty quick download, not too big of a file, only about 100, 170.6 megabytes, so not too big. And the other thing you'll need to is uh, make sure you have a USB uh, cable. And I'll show you that the, the USB cable itself uh, will be able to plug into uh, the port of your computer and obviously the back port of the uh, Arduino chipset. So it looks like it's done. I'm going to double tap it. And then now my, my uh, Mac is uh, uh, on the other screen here. I usually do a split screen so it's kind of bouncing up and down but it'll verify it on this main screen right here. Hopefully you can see that okay. And this is application download from the internet and I'll just say open. And then on my main screen, because I use a split screen here, it's pulling up, so we'll give it a second. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug in, I'll go back to the chip here, I'll go ahead and plug in the board. So like I said, use a USB set, but this is the, the main connector that you want. It usually comes with like printers and things. When you buy a new printer, plug that in there. And, <clears throat> Take the other end and plug it on the USB port on the side of the computer. And I'll put, just keep it up at the screen there. <clears throat> All right. Just have to reach around. Sorry for the thing there. There we go. All right. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So wait for it to recognize. And while it's doing that, you'll see that it's lit up. So there's power to the board. So it's enough to give power for the Arduino board. All right. So then what you do is to make sure that's connected right, you go over to Tools, okay? And then you make sure that your board's there. So it's an Arduino Uno. It picked it up automatically. You got the check mark right there. And then I'll make sure it's on the right port. So I got a couple ports going on there, but it's on the last one right there. You just click that one. So it should be reading it already. So some quick uh, notes here. Matter of fact, I'm going to move this to the big screen. So let me pause this here for a second. Okay, so what I want to show you real quick is I wired the uh, breadboard. So on the breadboard itself, you see an LED. And then I also had to put in a uh, 220 uh, resistor. And then I have my ground here. You see the ground is on the same uh, line as the uh, end part of the resistor. And then that end part of the resistor then goes, I should probably point with something that's a little easier to see here. Uh, then that, that goes from there up to the uh, negative side of the LED, and then it, as it loops around, then you got the positive end right there. So what does that mean? So what it means is, one, on the Arduino, all right, and one thing I want to point out is you can see how they're all labeled, and that ground is highlighted right there uh, within white. If you wanted to use the LEDs on the board, uh, number 13 is actually that orange one. So if you don't have a breadboard, you just want to do a blinking test, you can just use, you can declare uh, number 13. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to use another port other than 13. So I'm going to plug this into the ground. All right. And then this one here, we'll use, why don't we say we use uh, number nine. There we go. 
And actually, I already got a program running in the back, but I'm going to show you all how to build that program in a second. Okay, so how do we build the program here? All right, so there's three areas that you need to look at within the Arduino programming set. So at the very beginning, this is where you can declare all your uh, main variables or your ports and things. And then down here is where your, your main base uh, programming code is. And just to remind everybody, when you're dealing with C++, it's very intuitive. Uh, so a lot of things are kind of, I don't say common sense, but they're close to it. And so uh, you'll find that there are a lot of keywords and things out there. When you understand it, uh, it'll be easy to, to roll in there. So I'll explain to you in a second here. So, and then of course right here is the repeated loop area. So if there's certain parts of your program, like if then statements or things that gotta run repeatedly that you want to, uh, to have run in the background, like we're gonna make a, a blinking program. So obviously that would be down here. So let's start off with, so if you remember the port that we plugged in, we plugged it in port number nine. So what we wanna do is uh, we wanna initialize, or I think it's also called integer, but initialize that. And we'll say that the LED pin is gonna be number nine. All right, because that's where we plugged it in at. And one thing I got to remember too, I always forget this, but you want to put a semicolon at the end of every line that you type in the programming to show that it's the end of that particular line. So now we'll go on to the baseline programming. So now that we said we want to use that port, what does that mean then? So now we want to go to pin mode, right? And we want to declare that LED pin, all right, which is number nine, uh, we want to make that an output. All right, so we got to put that in all caps. And when you do that, it should change color and it should recognize it. And when it changes color and recognizes it, then uh, you're good to go there. Uh, and then uh, we'll go into our loop aspect of the program. And so what you want to do here is we want we now want to say, okay, we've got output, we, we, we know which pin we're using, and so now what do we want to do? Well, we want to send... Um, voltage, or I should say uh, electrical current, into the Arduino board uh, to be able to make the LED blink. And like I said before, it's important to have that resistor in there so that way you're not burning up your board. So when we do a digital write, that's what we're going to do because we're on a digital side, so digital write. And st same LED, so LED pin, which we already declared at the very beginning. Now here, when you want to turn it on and turn it off, the word high means on, and you see how that turned blue? So now we've just turned our LED on. Uh, and I already broke my rule there, I gotta put my semicolon there. All right, and then because it's a computer, when it turns something on, it's gonna happen really quick. So you also wanna be able to put enough of a delay in there so you can see it. So then you say uh, delay, and because it deals with milliseconds, like, you know, that's one millisecond, that's 10 milliseconds, you're still not gonna see it 100. So a thousand milliseconds is what? One second. So now you get a delay of one second. We'll put the semicolon in there. And now what do we want to do? Well, we want to turn it off. So what do you think that's going to be? Digital, right? And instead of, and of course we've got to declare our LED, whoops, LED pin. Instead of high, what do you think it's going to be? The exact opposite, low. And low means off. And then put your semicolon on the end there. We want to put a delay, all right, of another thousand milliseconds. And you can play around with that and change whatever milliseconds you want and put your semicolon in there. So the neat thing about this is it's got a compiler, which is this check mark here to tell you if your program has, has been written correctly. So we'll hit it. Oh, and also it's got to tell you to save it too. We're going to get all excited. So we'll just call this um, blink test uh, three, I guess. And it's going to save it in that file. So it's saved. So it's compiling it. And when it's done at the very bottom, it'll say Say right there, how many bytes it used, 2% of the program, you got plenty left, so it's plenty good to go. So it says it's good to go. So now what we gotta do is we gotta uh, load it into the Arduino board. So we hit this arrow, it says upload, and then I'm gonna go to the board, and there you go. One second, two seconds. See how it's blinking? And so very easy baseline programming uh, with the Arduino board. So I encourage you all just to use what I've written and then play around with the, um, with the numbers uh, as far as your uh, delays. See if you can get more ports uh, activated, you know, and uh, it's real easy. Put some more LEDs on here if you have a breadboard and make sure you put your resistors in line because you don't want to burn up your Arduino and then play around with that. And once you get all LEDs uh, blinking in a certain way, now you can do the same thing with motors. And now you're getting into moving, um, you know, remote control vehicles or robots and then, you know, rotating arms with certain actuators. So 
this is an open source um, uh, chipset here. Um, you know, it's got processors, all that, all those things on there, all the baseline that you need. So good luck to you, and uh, happy programming.